Hi everyone, welcome to a tutorial guide that we split into several videos showing you tips, tricks, and overall help you improve at the new DST event, The Forge. Starting with the first thing you need to know is that there are about 4 roles in The Forge, the DPS, the tank, the healer, and the runner. Please note that most of these roles are interchangeable with other characters. Today we will be taking a look at the DPS role. The DPS role is mostly known by the characters Wendy, Weber, and Willow. The characters Maxwell and Winona are also considered a wild card in this role as well. Wendy and Weber are both considered DPS as they both have companions to help them fight. Willow is DPS because she gets increased damage when using fire weapons such as the Molten Darts and the Inferno Staff. Maxwell and Winona are wild cards due to the fact that Maxwell has a chance to summon shadow minions for extra damage after consecutive hits, and Winona's wide range of weapons and stats allow her to take this role as well. Please note that Maxwell is only really effective when he gets to wield the staves. These characters are interchangeable and are not a must. Now onto what you should do in the forge as the DPS. The number one tip for playing DPS is to always focus on one target as a team. This tip applies to tanks as well, and even the healer at times. In the first couple of stages, there aren't a lot of mobs appearing at once, so your job as the DPS is to stick with your tank slash team and take out the enemies together. Now, depending on what your team is composed of, sometimes the DPS can get away with taking one or two mobs off of the group and attacking them on their own. This shouldn't always be done though, as working together is always stronger than fighting alone. Now, because DPS is kind of set in stone, as all you do is just attack things, I will talk more about the do's and don'ts of the DPS role. Like I said before, what you should be doing as a DPS is focusing on one target as a team. Doing this will not only make the waves go by faster, but allow for less casualties and less pressure in general. What you shouldn't do as a DPS is attack different enemies from what your team is focusing. You also should not, and I repeat, should not, interrupt the runner at all costs. The runner has his enemies under control, and most likely has their own routine that they follow. Interrupting them not only messes them up, but can also cause a major problem for you and your team. The DPS also have access to ranged attacks, so it is viable to use that range to your advantage. Because of the fact that you can use range from afar, you should be cautious of your surroundings so you don't take unnecessary damage. You won't be much help to the team if you are constantly taking damage and making it so that your healer has to babysit you and not the tanks. Also as a DPS, you should be trying to spam your weapon's right click ability as much as you can, without it interfering with sleeping or petrified enemies of course. Also as a DPS, you want to look out for enemies using their guards, meaning the Snortus is hiding in their shells and the Barilla is blocking themselves. You can use your weapon's special ability, excluding normal darts, to break them out of their guards so your team can continue to do damage to them. One last thing the DPS should look out for is the battle standards dropped by the Croc Commanders. The battle standards help buff the enemies and since DPS have ranged attacks, it is easier for you guys to take them out than say the tanks or the healer. When it comes to fighting the final champion, there are a couple things you should do and should not do. A very important thing to remember when fighting the champion, as any role to be honest, is to always let him sleep. He does too much damage and can quickly wipe a team with his AoE attacks. When you see the green circle appear from the healer casting the living staff, that is your cue to stop attacking. Most of the time, it is the DPS who continue to attack the champion while he is in the circle, thus preventing him from sleeping. Doing that is a big no-no, so don't do it. Another thing that the DPS should do is that halfway through the champion fight, the champion will spawn minions to help him fight. When your healer puts down the healing circle to put the champion to sleep, it is your job and everyone else's job to stand in the middle of the circle and group everything together. Why should you do this? Well, you should do this because the easiest way to take out these minions and not be overrun is for everyone to basically group attack them. When all the mobs are together and the healing circle is about to end, everyone should unleash their special ability on those groups of enemies to take them out easily. Plus, the champion's AoE attack can also do damage to his minions, thus making it a bit easier to kill them as well. Remember, your job is to output damage and take as little damage as possible. Now we'll talk a bit about the weapon prioritization concerning Willow, but there is one more thing I would like to mention. If you see that your teammates are down and that the Wilson on your team is taking aggro or is about to be attacked, be that hero that he needs and take the enemy off of that player. It is Wilson's job to revive people, not the DPS. Wilson gives better stats on revive, so if possible, you should always be helping and bodyguarding your Wilson if he is trying to res people. Don't try to res the fallen teammates, as Wilson is able to revive, at most, two more people before you can finish one person. It is better for Wilson to res and for you to continue to do damage or protect him. DPS stands for damage per second, not steal people's destinies. Now there is a bit of an issue when it comes to having a Willow and a Maximal on the team, and both of them are running DPS. Willow's ability is that she gets a 10% increase in damage when using fire and explosive weapons. That means Willow does increased damage when using the Molten Darts and Inferno Staff. Maxwell's ability also adds a really strong increase to DPS for a bit, as he summons Shadow Minions that quickly attack and deal good damage. Here's where the problem arises, Maxwell is only really effective when using a staff of some sort. 
If for some reason the team is running Wickerbottom, Maxwell and Willow, Wickerbottom should heal and Maxwell and Willow are DPS. In this situation, Maxwell will get the Inferno Staff as his special ability will actually be used to its full potential, and Willow will use the Molten Darts as she will still deal a good chunk of damage with just Molten Darts. Just because Willow deals increased damage with fire weapons, it doesn't mean she should always take the Inferno Staff. Yeah, most of the time she should take it, but under certain circumstances, it's better for her to not take it and let someone else use it. This is a team-based event, remember that, so working together and helping each other out usually leads to success, not onto the armor. For DPS, there is no real armor set for them. Basically, the DPS just pick up the scraps from the rest of the team. If you see an extra armor piece laying around that no one else is using, or has been on the ground for a while and not being used, then feel free to pick it up. The basic armor set for the DPS should just be the wood armor. DPS usually only run this for a while until the healer and the tanks have their armor sets complete. After they have completed their sets, it is okay for the DPS to pick up the jagged wood armor or the stone split mail for a chest piece. DPS usually run without a helmet for a good while until the tanks get what they need and the healer gets the woven garland. Again, after the other roles have settled on what they needed, the DPS are free to pick up helmets such as the barbed helm, the nox helm, the crystal tiara, and the clavorant crown. A cool fact is that the clavorant crown is the only helmet that is specific to the DPS role as it gives huge benefits to the person who wields the Inferno Staff. An important note, don't just grab everything in sight as soon as it drops. This is a team-based event, and you most likely don't need that item. Well, that is it for the DPS role. You are now able to fight your way into the Forge efficiently and effectively. Once again, these characters are interchangeable and are not locked to them. They just make the job easier. I will be doing the other roles soon, so be sure to stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck in the Forge.